It's me, Zero, and I'm back with another tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the advanced storm controller and the storm beacons. I'm guessing some of you guys expected this, as in my last video about my map, Vortex, I asked if you guys wanted a tutorial, and it looked like a lot of you guys did. I'm going to be showing you the settings that I used on my recent map but I will also be showing you guys what some settings do, some of the settings I didn't even use, but just to not confuse you guys, I want to explore all areas of the storm controller and storm beacon so none of us get confused. The advanced storm controller and the advanced storm beacons are both relatively new as they just came out with season X, and since they're new, I might not know everything, so feel free to correct me, or I might say something that is actually not needed, so feel free to correct me there too, so, just put a timestamp in the comments, tell me what I did wrong or what is actually not needed, and I'll be able to add it to the pinned comment. Also, if you have a question, feel free to ask me in the comments, but I'll also be adding frequently asked questions and answers in the pinned comment as well. That will always be updating, so before you ask a question, always check the pinned comment and see if your question is already answered. Let's get right into the video. Back in Season 9, we were able to acquire the basic storm controller that was a one phase storm of the storm going to the exact center. This was good, but the problem was it was not a lot of customizability with this item. So recently in Season X, we were given the advanced storm controller and the storm beacon. At first, I thought this idea was a bit inefficient. The reason why is because instead of just having one controller, they're all spread out in between three. But in reality, this helps a lot because it's easy to identify which ones do what and it separates the whole process making it easier for the player. Now before I teach you guys on how to work with the storm, I'm going to teach you guys the properties of each of these storm controllers. The advanced storm beacon is what gives you the most customizable storm. These things customize each phase meaning storm movement. The max amount of phases you can have with this beacon is 50, that's 5 times the normal amount of phases in a normal game. But if you want to go to a number that big, you're going to need 50 of these beacons because you need a beacon per phase. A system like this for creative is really good because you can change one beacon and the other ones will remain untouched and unchanged. This is really good for customizability because let's say one phase is a bit too fast, you're able to change that. Or let's say one phase feels like there's too much damage. You can change that specifically for that phase while the other ones get to stay the same. The rest of the settings for this storm beacon we'll get to later when we start creating our storm. Now we're going to go to the advanced storm controller. The advanced storm controller is the flagship of the storm. So the storm phases you can have that custom on default. Default just means it only has 10 phases. Custom means you can go up to 50. I just leave it on custom. Phase 1 radius. This is the first phase, the initial size of it. So if you're going to have something smaller like 50 or 100 meters radius, that's going to be probably more of just an end game simulator. But if you have something bigger like 200 or 300 meters or even higher, that's probably going to be like a mini BR. Delay time is just how long it takes for the storm to appear after starting a match. Starting phase, just we'll get to that later. And then late phases move mean storm can shift out of the safe zone into the storm and make a new safe zone instead of just shrinking down in the current safe zone. Alright, time to make our storm. You will notice that the advanced storm controller has this bright purple circle surrounding it. You can change the size of this from this phase 1 radius. Since I want to make everything clear, I'm going to change it to a smaller size so we can see everything on the screen easier. Make sure your starting phase is 1 and late phases move is on yes. Throw down a storm beacon and place it directly on top of your advanced storm controller. 
After you've done this, make sure that the phase 1 radius you chose for your advanced storm controller is the exact same as the end radius for the beacon we just put on top. Also, make sure that the starting phase in your advanced storm controller is the exact same as the fade you have on your advanced storm beacon right on top. So that means if you have one on your advanced storm controller, you want one as the phase numbered on your beacon right on top. Next thing for the beacon on top, change the wait time to five seconds and the resize time to 30 and the damage to whatever you want. Next thing you'll see is movement behavior, changes to move to beacon for the one on top. Next thing you'll see is move distance min and move distance max. I put these on zero meters and zero meters just because they're a bit inconsistent at the moment, but you can definitely play around with it and if you test around, you might get the perfect settings for you. The reason I stack this beacon on top of the controller is because I want to guarantee the initial storm size to be in the same place. Otherwise, if we kept it on random, some spawns might end up in the storm. No worries, this doesn't mean we can't have the storm be random later on. It's just specifically for this starting initial size. What you're going to want to do next is copy another beacon and place it down. It doesn't matter where this is placed, but I recommend putting it close to have everything in one place. Next, you're going to want to change the phase to 2, because how the phase machine works is it counts upwards. And since the one on top is already 1, you're not able to have 2 of the same number, so make sure that they are different. With this new phase, after changing the phase to 2, I'm just going to lower the end radius 1 down. Next, change the movement behavior to move randomly. This makes this phase move randomly, as it said. And then, if you want to play around with the move distance min and max, I usually put it as 10 meters min and 20 meters max. Now that we added this other beacon, when you press start game, we should have a shrinking storm 5 seconds in the game. But, of course, don't forget, this is just the first phase. We still need to do a lot more to get it down to shrink to just nothing. This is where the process gets easy. Grab the phase 2 beacon we left next to the controller, and copy and paste one of them. Now, with the one we just copied and pasted, make the end radius one smaller from what it is. Make the phase from two to three, and then accept. Now, basically the process is just repeat. Copy the most recent one, make the phase one up, and make the end radius one down, and then copy that one, paste it, make the phase one up, make the end radius one down. You do this until you get to the end radius to don't override. If you followed along with adding a beacon and lowering the radius once each time, great! But if you have your starting phase at somewhere around 300 meters radius or higher, you will end it with a lot more than 10 phases. So instead of lowering the radius once every time you copy and paste a beacon, consider lowering it twice per phase to get things running smoothly. But, it all depends on how much time each phase takes to resize, depending on how you'd like to balance it. So press start game and see which storms move too slow, too fast, or simply not needed. The ones you'd like to adjust, just remember what storm it was, end game, then walk up to that number beacon and fiddle with the settings. If you delete any beacons, make sure you replace and change the numbers so the beacons start from 1, counting up without skipping or repeating a number. Remember, phases count up. A beacon with phase 1 will be first, 2 will be after 1, and 3 will be after 2, and 4 will be after 3, etc. I recommend keeping mini BRs at max 10 phases and max 10 minutes long. A good example of this is Enigma's mini BR. He's got multiple phases, each that shrink differently, but in the end it adds up to around 10 minutes. If you're making an endgame map, I recommend the matches to be 5 minutes at max. Otherwise, it gets boring for people who died in the first minute. A screw map at max should only have 10 phases, but have each phase always be 30 seconds resize time. This way, it feels tight and fast paced like a real endgame, and since there isn't any lower times than 30, 30 is definitely the way to go. Before I finish the video, I want to go over some island settings so your zone horse is running smoothly other than the storm. In the background, you can see me placing simple spawns. Do not make spawns like these. This is just a low effort to get the point across, and do not use the island I am using, it is all for a tutorial. I use this island because it was the most straightforward and easy to show everything for a tutorial. I recommend using as much terrain from other islands as you can, or creating your own. Islands like Tropical, Volcano, Arctic, Default Island, and more. 
For the items on the map, I'm just using a starting inventory and dropping blue items with a shield, bandages, and resources. I know this isn't random items like Vortex, but since this is a tutorial island and is low effort for simplicity, it wasn't needed and I didn't design that method to, I use to make random items and is not mine to claim. The credit for that goes to Pimit and Immature Gamer. I'm going to link both of their tutorials for random items and I recommend you subscribe to them if you haven't for high quality maps and videos. And here just follow these settings, this is how I make a zoners map from my island settings and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Um, thank you guys for watching the video. Um, use code Zero Hero. Subscribe if you want more. I have another Zone Wars map coming up soon. It's trios, and then after that, I got duos, more solos. I just got a lot planned. Um, so yeah, hit that subscribe button. Please hit the like so other people see this video. Um, and yeah, have a good day. See you.